Hello and welcome to the Coal Authority podcast. The Coal Authority exists to make a better future for people and the environment in mining areas. We carry out vital work to keep people, drinking water and the environment safe from the legacy impacts of our mining heritage. These podcasts are intended to offer some insight into the work that we do and why we do it. And we hope that we'll find them interesting and we would welcome any suggestions for content for future podcasts as these series grow. Without further ado, let's get into the next episode. Thank you. Hello and a very warm welcome to our brand new Confidence in the Coalfield podcast series. A podcast where we bring industry professionals together to discuss our collaborative working and the value we bring to the Scottish paralegals and legal community with the buying and selling of property or land for development in coalfield areas. Today, I am delighted and very excited to be joined by the one and only Sandra Reid, President of the Scottish Paralegal Association. Thank you so much for supporting our very first podcast together, Sandra, and the first of many more together. My pleasure to be here. Lovely to to do this. Very excited to be doing it as well. Thank you, Sandra. So let's start with a few introductions. So tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Delighted to be here, as I said. I'm Sandra Reid. I'm the president of the Scottish Paralegal Association. I'm also an accredited paralegal. I've been the president of the association for around about six or seven years, maybe more than that. I've been a member of the association. I work in property, residential and commercial, and I've been doing that also for over 20 years. Love my job, love my work, love being involved in the association. Um, It's the best. It's really the best. And you wear a lot of different hats, don't you, with all, all the different jobs that you do there? Yeah, because no two jobs are the same. Every every job that you do is completely different from the, the one before. Uh, some are really easy, some are really difficult. It just depends. Uh, you don't know what's in front of you until you see the title deeds. So it's really exciting. Oh, so. That, that's brilliant. Thank you for that, Sandra. So I'll, I'll just introduce the Coal Authority and, and myself. So the Coal Authority are a non-departmental public body and partner organisation for the Department of Energy Security and Net Zero. And our mission is to make a better future for people in the environment in mining areas. So I'm Lisa Conway. I'm one of the development managers for Scotland, looking after some of the Coal Authority's customers who buy and sell our coal mining reports, which support homeowners to make confident, well-informed decisions about living in coalfield areas. I'm going to bring it back now to you, Sandra. So tell us a bit more around the Scottish Paralegal Association and what it actually takes to be a Scottish paralegal. So first of all, the association, it's an association for paralegals, as you say. It's a non-profit making organisation. It's yeah. run by a committee of volunteers. There are eight of us at the moment. All of the uh, committee members are accredited paralegals. The association has around about 600 or so members. The majority of them are also accredited paralegals, but we have some members who are not accredited. Uh, They're uh, just, um, I don't mean just, but they are paralegals. They do a fantastic job, just the same as accredited paralegals. We have members throughout the whole of Scotland, we have yeah. some members that live abroad as well. Wow. Um, and they work from home. So they um, actually do work for Scottish firms, but they, they just happen to live in Spain or other places abroad. So we our aim is to try and get the best career path and others for paralegals. The association were instrumental along with the Law Society and getting the accredited scheme started. That scheme has been going for over 10 years now. So 
the scheme itself that is voluntary. Not everybody needs to be an accredited paralegal. Ideally, we paralegals would like to see it being um, a mandatory scheme, just the same as the solicitors are for the Law Society, but that's still a long way off. Um, start small and we'll get there in the end. So that's, not That's really good. I mean, just... I mean, what a great opportunity it is for, you know, people in other countries as well to sort of mm. learn from from us, you know, in, in the UK uh, of how we're doing things. Absolutely. Part of the things that we do is, as you know, we do conferences and events. So paralegals are required to do 10 hours per annum of continuing professional development. So our conferences bring that those 10 hours so if paralegals come to our two conferences one in april which is our main conference is usually held in glasgow and the other in um, october november is usually held in dundee we uh, have exhibitors we have fantastic speakers you know the coal authority is one of our main supporters so yep. it's lots of things that we do and we are well supported by Lots of good companies and firms such as yourself. Our main sponsor, as you know, is First Scottish Searching Services, and they do an enormous amount for us, as you also do too. That's brilliant. Thanks for that, Sandra. So I think now if if we bring it back to like looking at the buying and selling of property in Scotland, because it is a very, very different process, isn't it, compared to it is. It yeah. Is. To, to England and Wales and I think you know with, with kind of the way uh, we do it in England sellers appoint an estate agent and they they work on the on the marketing of the property and they will then appoint a separate solicitor at a later date when they've accepted an offer on their home so the only real legal requirement when selling in England is to order an EPC certificate for the home which confirms the energy efficiency of the property. So how, how does that sort of compare to, to Scotland? So in Scotland, when you're selling a property, you must have a home report. The home report includes a survey of the property, an EPC, and also a questionnaire that's completed by the current homeowner. In Scotland, we also have estate agents. Uh, some solicitors firms combine their legal work and estate agency. So it's a one stop shop for a, a seller or a purchaser. They can arrange their, their sale or their purchase through the estate agency of the firm and then use the same firm for their conveyancing work. You can also use a different estate agency and a different solicitor entirely up to you. You must have a home report, as I say. The process is slightly different in Scotland as well in respect of the contract. We have missives and the aim of a conveyancer is to try and get the missives concluded as quickly as possible, at the, as early into the transaction as possible. And that means that the bargain is binding on both parties at an early stage. Just, I don't know. It feels like it's a lot quicker in, in Scotland and, and deals kind of get over the line a lot quicker. Yeah, it is quicker and it can be quicker in Scotland. If it's a cash purchase, i.e. you're not looking to, to get any loan funds or sell any property uh, to complete your purchase, depending on your workload, you can get that over the line in a week or two. If it's um, if you're waiting on a mortgage offer, you cannot conclude the bargain until you've got your mortgage offer, because otherwise you're you're tying the customer or the client into a contract before they've got funding in place. Yeah. So if you've got a mortgage offer, it can take about four weeks, a bit longer. Some lenders get loans out within a couple uh, offers of loans out within a couple of weeks. Some take a couple of months. It just depends. Depends on how busy they are as well. But the system is completely different. I'm familiar with both. I, I do prefer the Scottish one, but that's probably because I've been doing that for a lot longer. Yeah. And a lot more of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brilliant. OK, so we're now going to move on to what's hot in the property news in Scotland. And I think it's fair to say we're now starting to see a steadying of average house prices, but the market is still performing, performing very well. 
we've obviously seen lots and lots of challenges and you know now base rates are currently 5.25 percent and the monetary policy committee are due to meet i think on the 21st of september they meet on average eight times a year and there's predictions that, that we're going to see further increases to 5.5 percent so we'll kind of see how um that affects things from there and, you know, the property market is being described as as very buoyant in Scotland. You know, you've got places like yeah. East Lothian, you know, we've seen house price growth of 10 percent and Scotland's thriving. And, you know, we are seeing, aren't we, Sandra, mortgage rates are, uh, are starting to come down. They're around about the, the 6 percent ish mark. Just going back to house prices. So people have people say that, oh, the market slowed down. Personally, I haven't seen any slowdown. People still want to buy, whether or not the rates are higher or lower. Obviously, if you're selling, you want to achieve the best price that you can. But at the other end, you've got to pay that higher price as well for your purchase. So the two kind of knock each other out. What has changed in my view is that at the height of all of this, in Scotland, we have offers over. We do have fixed price sales as well, but in the main, they're offers over. So the surveyor will give you a value and there'll be in your home report the value and the estate agent or whoever's marketing the property will market the property at offers over. When sales were going crazy, it wasn't unusual to have to offer 30 or 40 percent over uh, the figure being asked for to secure a property. That has changed now. It's back down to what it used to be, maybe between five and fifteen percent, depending on the area. Yeah. Um, okay, that's so. fantastic. Thank you. Um, so I think now, if we bring it on to, should we talk about should we talk about coal mining in Scotland for for a little yeah, bit? Yeah. And uh, of course. So, fifty one percent of residential dwellings sit on the coal field, and to us at the Coal Authority, it's really important that we want home buyers to feel confident when they're making decisions to buy a home in coalfield areas or even if you're a developer and you're considering buying land you know for most people this is going to be the most important transaction they will ever make in their lifetime so it's imperative you know people feel happy and confident in their decisions um, and as you will know Sandra the coal authority have been a trusted organization for customers for it's almost three decades now and we have a wealth of experience knowledge and lots of expertise throughout the organization you know we've got hydrogeologists mining consultants licensing professionals and geotechnical engineers just to name a few and we also have an amazing customer service team who do an incredible job in supporting customers building strong relationships to make sure, you know, they're happy. Scottish paralegals and the legal professionals are, are happy. And also to kind of say that you don't need to be an expert. That's where the Coal Authority are, are here to help and support. And we've got lots and lots of um, incredibly talented people, passionate people at the Coal Authority that are always willing to help. So, um, in terms of coal mining reports as well, last year we delivered 56,989 coal mine reports. And this information is all derived from the plans that we hold dating back to the 1800s and the work that we've carried out in other teams across the organisation who deal with things like mine water treatment schemes, licensing areas and where there's been like historical mining related incidents as well. These things are all really interesting and we don't really get to, to hear about the background very often because when we are um, selling a property, yeah, we get a coal report, but we don't know all the work that goes in behind the scenes to produce that, not to yeah. physically produce it, but to get and gather all the information so that the report is accurate. And that's when we're reading these coal reports and we can see that everything's fine, that gives us the confidence to go back to the, the client to say you're, you're buying a property in a good area. There's no coal mines. Everything's fine. Nothing to worry about. It's fantastic, the information that we can get. And also, if there is anything on the coal report that we need to check, 
it's great to be able to pick up the phone and speak to somebody at the call authority and uh, get the answer to any questions that you might have. Yeah, definitely. It's it's worth its weight in gold, isn't it? Having those those key relationships. Yeah, it is absolutely. And I think, like, just touching on on what you were saying about, you know, what goes on, you know, behind the report itself. You know, we've got a very impressive archive of coal mining information at the Coal Authority, all in a like a temperature controlled room, and and it's it's a really impressive piece of history, really. You know, all of the old plans are preserved in their original condition and all on like types of different materials and paper. And we we at the Coal Authority offer site tours and, and people love to come Fantastic. and see. Yeah, like the, the history and like I say, it really brings brings it kind of back to today where we've captured all of that information digitally into our geographic information systems. And then we've created our own coal mining reports you know off off the back of it to help people make those those confident informed decisions and you know of course the offer is open to you and and Scottish Paralegals if you did want to come down to the Coal Authority in Mansfield and have a little look around the archive because it really does you know sort of bring who we are to life so yeah that that offer is always open to you as well. And I think, you know, I think as well, it's, it's, it's the people behind what we do that make the, the biggest difference. You know, we've still got people working at the Coal Authority from when we established in 1994. You know, people love working here. We're all really passionate individuals and, you know, we, we thrive on the on the positive impact that we make on, on people's lives. You know, we're here to, to make a better future for people in the environment in mining areas and, Customers are at the heart of what we do. You know, we build strong relationships with our customers and, and partners. And I think it's fair to say, you know, coal mining is a, a pretty niche subject. Um, and really the idea behind us doing a podcast uh, as well. So, you know, we, we want the Scottish paralegals uh, to feel confident. And what you do at the Scottish Paralegal Association is an integral part of what we do because it enables, you know, key key industry professionals to get together, share knowledge and information. So now feels like a good time, Sandra. Should we we have a little chat about the event that's coming up? So um, the Autumn Conference is on November the 2nd in the Apex Hotel in Dundee. Uh, We are expecting to have um, probably around about 80 paralegals there. There's still some tickets left if you want to come along. Uh, you'll be able to order a ticket via the website. We have got the Coal Authority coming along. We've got our Scottish Registers of Scotland and some of the other people who are sponsors and come along on a regular basis. It's going to be a great uh, event. There will be speakers, exhibitors, a full day event, lunch and everything's provided. And the Apex is a fantastic hotel as well. So a great day out. That's Come along and join us. Mm-hmm. No, I'm I'm really looking forward to it, and I know um we've kind of been doing a lot of work, haven't we, Sandra, in the background? We have, absolutely. And I, I've been sort of planning my presentation this year to do something a little bit different, um, because I think it's fair to say everyone's got different learning styles, and it's something that I've thought about, you know, following kind of other events that I've attended. You know, we want Scottish paralegals to have a great experience when dealing with the Coal Authority and to learn something new. So for my presentation, all I'll say is you'll, they'll need their phones and an open mind. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So um, I think we're going to start to wrap things up now. So okay. to, to finish on, Sandra, what does confidence in the coal fields look like to you? It's important for us as paralegals to have um, a great relationship with the coal authority. It allows us to communicate with our clients, the purchasers, to give them confidence in their purchase, that they're not buying a a house over a coal mine or a mine shaft or anything like that. It's also important for us to have a key relationship with the coal authority so that if we do have any questions, we know that we can pick up the phone and get an expert on the line that will be able to answer us. Um, personally, I've never had any issues 
I don't believe any of our members have had any issues and it's just great to have such a good working relationship with the Coal Authority and with yourself, Lisa. It's just, it's it makes our life a lot easier. Okay, so I hope everyone's enjoyed listening. We're really looking forward to seeing you at the event in November. And I think if anyone has any questions, please do drop them in the comments box, either on social media, or you can raise a question through our ground stability website. And these will be picked up by our customer service team. And then we can answer them in our in our next podcast together. So or, massive... or even on the SPA's um, website, you can send an email to info at as well. And Lisa and I are always in touch. So yeah, no, that's that's brilliant. Thank you. So a big thank you to our audience for listening in. Sandra, thank you again so much. And My pleasure. We look forward to seeing you all again soon. So we hope you found that podcast interesting and insightful as we've shown it on our social media channels. If you have any questions or further comments or any suggestions for future podcasts, we'd be really pleased to hear from you. Uh, So don't be afraid to get in touch. And we look forward to spending some time with you next time. Thank you.